Everybody want to know, is 50 who he say he was? You know, was he the little terror? What type of guy would this guy really is? You know, did he had all those crazy events like the murders, the robbery and everything else? And folks, I got to admit to you, like, you know what? Like I say, A, his name, his reputation definitely fitted him because once again, it didn't matter. Once again, he had that philosophy, get rich or die trying. He didn't care. And to me, like you say, this is a guy, Wemo, that was kind of like put up to kill him. Did he meant to? He didn't have no choice. Either he did him in or he, him and his family was going to be doing. And he did what he had to do in order to survive. You know, once again, hang on him and rap. And like I say, the dude had like that little man complex and he didn't care. He didn't care whether you was his size or if you was six foot 10. If he seen something that you got and that he wanted, guess what? He was coming at you. It didn't matter. I'm talking about he was coming to get you. Whether he was gonna snatch it from you or whether he was gonna like, you know, come at you with a gun, a shotgun, it didn't matter. Despite the gun that he's carrying, it might be bigger than him, but he didn't care. If he wanted something, guess what? He was gonna get it one way or another. And if that mean he had to rub you out in order to get it, that's what he was gonna do. And sit back and look at it, man, folks. Like, even though you look at this little individual, he been gone now since what, 1987, October, 1987. So if you look at it, wow, 34 years, but yet and still his name ring louder than all outdoors. And I don't know whether it have anything to do with, you know, saying a rapper, taking over his name and taking over his mission statement, get rich or die trying. But look at it. Many years later, people are still like, you know, DM me, emailing me, ask me question. Was 50, was Calvin Martin the real deal? Was he as fair as a lot of people thought he was? And like I told you right now was, I met this cat when he was like, what, five and I was six in the Bedford Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn. And when I met him, like I told you right now, we were just friends. We were just little kids wanting to play around a Johnny Pump, you know, or playing tag or chasing each other, doing the things that kids do. Not knowing, like I say, you know, he, he didn't even live around there. His family, I'm talking about, you know, his cousins and aunts them live around there. And he used to come around there. And like I told you, I can remember an episode that one time his cousin and my brother at the time, they got into a physical confrontation. And you know what? 50 jumped in and he threw a bottle, hit my brother smack into the head. And he had a big nugget. And I tried to chase this little dude. And guess what, man? Here it is. Short, fast, where I'm going. You know, I needed a fly swap, wop, to catch him or whatever. But even as time went on, and I left the Bedford Stuyvesant section, went to East New York, and I guess he started going back into the section of Fort Greene. And we didn't run back into each other until we was like teenager. And you know what? Being that I ain't see him and I don't know when, you know what? I forgot who the heck he was. But, you know, we still had that bond. Being in C-74, 16, you know, like I'm saying, I think I'm 17 at the time. Like, man, they want to kick him. Like I'm saying, kick his behind. Because once again, a little thing with a big mouth. You know how you, you, you sit back and look at it, a little ant. And people, if you know anything about the ant, one thing about the ant, it's little, but it's powerful. I remember the first time an ant ever bit me. You know, I'm like, down south, you know, city boy, you know, an ant bit me. And I'm like, looking, whoa. And I'm scratching down there, what the heck is this? And then I'm looking and seeing how small and teeny an ant is. But yet and still, that bite, that sting, mm, it wasn't like a small sting. It was a hard sting. Like, this ant was, like, huge. So that's how 50 was. 50 was like a little ant. But guess what? The way he act, the way he presented himself, he packed a very powerful punch. And that's it. And the difference is, like I told you, he, you know, when I went upstate, at 17, he went back to the street, and guess what? His reputation. He started getting any and everything that he can possibly get into. And like I told you right now, from robbing, stealing, eventually getting to the drug game, shooting and killing people. And I can remember one incident at White Castle. It's like, to me, like, here it is, an incident took place. 
they was coming back from the skate ring in Long Island, and he got involved with something that he shouldn't even got involved in. And the difference is he grabbed a Uzi. And when he grabbed that Uzi, right now we in White Castle. So at White Castle, he pulling out the gun, going after somebody, and accidentally killed this college kid. Okay? This girl is out there on break. I'm talking about she's out there on spring break. I'm talking about an honor student. And what I'm saying, did he meant to do it? No. But the difference right now is, you know, he shot, hit, like I tell you right now, a person by mistake, but she died at a young age. And the difference is that to show you folks, like when you out there, you're doing things you don't got no business doing, or you hanging out with the wrong crowd, what's going to happen? You're going to get into some type of trouble. Easy to get into, hard to get out of. And right now, like even with him being a lost soul, being misguided, misdirected, what happened? He became notorious as a little, little short dude with the little man complex. But yes, and still his reputation became big in life all for the wrong reason. Listen, man, let's end this. No more 50 Cent. No more, you know, on Brian Glaze Gibbs. No more Cream. No more Prince. No more Fat Cat. No more Alpo. No more, you know, all Baby Sam. You know what? What we need more doctors. We need more lawyers. We need more positive role model for our kids. That's what we need. And so what we need to do is start, you know, bigging up and encouraging and speaking about people that's doing positive things in the neighborhood. Like, for example, DJ Keith Watkins from East New York Cypress Project, man. He got this program called No Kids Left Behind. And the difference is what he's doing is right now is he has this little fundraising for No Kids Left Behind. And even pre-COVID, what he used to do is he used to take them on trips. And I think right now one of the trips he took these young guys to was to Sing Sing to get them to understand, listen, he took a whole bus and they went to Sing Sing to visit that prison to let them know right now what these guys got to go through. And these are guys that went out there and commit crimes, you know, stealing, robbing, killing, selling drugs. And what happened? Look where they end up at. They end up in a dingy cell, in a penitentiary, you know, by the water. You know, Sing Sing, one of the worst jail in the world. But yet and still, he trying to teach them the value. If you take shortcut, you don't want to be in jail. So to me, let's start shouting out people like Keith Watkins, like other individuals that's giving back to the community, that's building the community up, opposing, building them down. You know what? What we have to do is we have to do better. Hey, thank you for joining me. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel. I am your host, the one they call Brian Glaze Gibbs. This is my ministry. Get your signed copy. If you order your signed copy of the Young Lucky Book by emailing me, Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Gibbs, G-I-B-B-S, 1201 at yahoo.com, I will send you Straight From Street Volume 1, you know what I'm saying, or Straight From Street Volume 2, whatever your choice, whatever you want. Thank you very much. Hit that like button, subscribe, and share.